Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up the PEL 104 using your PC and our PEL transfer software. That said, let's get started. So there's a couple of things we need to make sure of before we get started. So we've got the PEL 104, it's connected up to a power supply to the mains via the figure of eight lead at the bottom there. And we've also got the included USB cable we've connected from the USB socket on the bottom of the PEL 104 all the way through to our PC. We've also downloaded the PEL transfer software from the Chauvin Arnu website, and we've got it installed and up and running. So with all that done, we can now start and connect the PEL to the software. So the first thing we need to do on the software is we need to add the instrument. So we go to instrument, and add instrument. We select PEL 104 or 106 and press next. And we've got a list of various connection options. In this case, we are connected via the USB cable. So we tick that option and again, press next. We can see that it's found the device. We've got PEL 104 listed on there. So again, we can press next. And it's established connection. It says a direct connection with the instrument was established. So finish, and we are now connected to the PEL 104. So now we're connected to the PEL. We can see some of the live data has already started coming through, and we can see things like the date and time and battery temperature and all those sorts of parameters. If we click on the next tab down, we can actually see any recorded sessions that are saved in the memory of the PEL. And if we click on real-time data here, we can actually see some real-time measurement values, for example, voltage, current, THD and other parameters. But what we're here to do today is to have a look at the configuration. So to do the configuration, we need to click on the little spanner and screwdriver icon, and the current configuration of the PEL will be loaded up into the software. So what we do now is we work box by box, tab by tab through the settings to configure the PEL ready for the login session that we're gonna carry out. So starting at the top here, we have the name and location. Obviously, they can be tweaked depending on where the PEL is and what project you're working on. We then move down, we've got contrast and brightness, so we can set the display contrast and brightness, pretty straightforward. Um, we have the auto power off ride through time. Normally, I would advise setting this to the minimum, which is three minutes. And the auto power off ride time basically tells us how long the PEL will try and stay on if the power is interrupted. So what we want is the PEL to recognize that the power has been interrupted, to record that in the log and shut down properly. As soon as the power is returned to the PEL, it will power up and start logging. So generally in this case, we'd normally go for three minutes, which is perfectly adequate. The next box on here is the aggregated maximum values. Generally, I would set these to aggregate only while a logging session is active. Next, we have a couple of options on here to lock the control buttons and password protect the device. And a very important setting on here is to set the clock. Obviously, when you are carrying out a logging session, you want to know what time and date each event happened. And if the clock's incorrect, obviously your data too will be incorrect. So it's important to check how far your PEL actually differs from the clock built into your PC. So you can see on here that mine is only out by minus one seconds. If I did want to change that, I can go to set clock and then synchronize with PC clock. What that will do is it'll take the timing signal from my PC and use that to configure the time within the PEL. So we can see now that we've synchronized. I also have the option at the bottom here to format the PEL's SD card. So we can format that before we start the session to make sure we've got enough room. However, the SD card is very large and you can fit several logging sessions usually onto, onto one card. So in this case, I'm not going to format the SD card, but the option is there should we need it. Now, moving on to the communication tab, this being the PEL 104, there are many communication options. So we've got the option for Bluetooth, LAN, Wi-Fi, GPRS or 3G connection, and the IRD or the relay server. We have a separate video talking you through these configuration options, so I'm not gonna spend much time on that today. But suffice to say, you can configure all of the various communication settings using this tab. We now move on to the measurement tab. In the measurement tab, we can pick the type of electrical installation we are working on. 
So this could be in the case here, I've got a single phase two wire connection. We could also have three phase four wire. We could have a DC connection or various other options in between. The Pell is pretty well covered for every type of electrical installation that you're going to come across. However, in many cases, particularly if you're working on a DC installation, specialist CTs will be needed to measure DC currents. So we select the correct option, which in my case is a single phase two wire setting. And you can see from the diagram on the right hand side here that actually it shows me how to connect up the various connections, so the voltage and current connections, and it also shows me how to connect up the current transformer. So you can see on here there is an arrow on the current transformer pointing towards the load. That's very important and it makes sure that when you look on the side of your CT that the little arrow that's embossed in the plastic is pointing in the same direction as it is on this diagram, which is normally towards the load. At the bottom here, we've got options for voltage transformers. So if we were working with voltage transformers, maybe an HV installation, um, we can set up the ratios for those. And at the bottom, we've got options for the frequency. So the Pell 104 will work at 50, 60 and 400 Hertz. And I've set it to automatically detect the frequency that it's working on in this case. Moving on to the current sensors tab, generally the Pell 104 will detect the current sensors that you have plugged into it and configure accordingly. In this case, we have an MA194 flexible CT connected to the PEL 104, and that's automatically been detected. All I need to pick is the closest range so that the PEL can configure itself to give me the best resolution measurements. So in my case, I've picked the 100 amp range on here. Now we do have the option to increase the number of wraps so the number of wraps with a flexible CT means I can wrap it around the cables. This gives a better coupling between the Rogowski coil and the, the cable that's being measured, the current field that's being measured. But if I do that, I need to tell the software that I actually done multiple wraps. So in my case, I've only got one wrap, so we leave the wrap setting to one. But if I had used multiple wraps, I need to configure that in this setting here. So if we go onto the recording tab, what we can see on here is at the top, we can set the session name. Below, we have the option to record now, so the recording will start immediately, or we can set a scheduled recording. Now we've got options here. We can either pick the duration of the recording and it will work out the start and stop times for us, or we can actually start and stop the recording time based on the exact values that we type in. Now below that we've got the aggregation period. So the aggregation period is how often we get a, a summary of the measured value. So we get a maximum, a minimum and an average. And this can range from one minute all the way up to 60 minutes, depending on what value we want. Now below that, we've got options for the level of data that we actually want beyond just the, the standard aggregated data. So we can record individual harmonics for current and voltage if we wanted to, up to the 50th harmonic. We can record one second trend data um, for things like current, voltage, energy and power factor. Um, and this being the PEL 104, we can actually go down even below that to 0.2 of a second or 200 millisecond data should we want. So down at the bottom of the page, we've actually got two useful bars on here. So the first bar is tell us how much uh, memory has been used already on the SD card and the second bar is telling us how much memory we would need to carry out the logging session. So this is a quick check for us to make sure before we carry out the logging session that we've got enough space left on our SD card. Moving on to the next tab, we have the meters tab. So within the PEL 104 we have a number of meters which will keep track of values over time during the logging session. For example, energy values. So we could compare these to say an energy meter within the fixed installation. So we have the option on this tab to reset those meters before we start the logging session. And generally it's a good idea to do that. Now other features that are available only on the PEL 104, we have alarm conditions. So we have the ability here to actually configure and advance alarms so for example, if the voltage goes above or below a certain value, we can set that within the software and it will record those alarms. We also have the option via the IRD server to send emails if those alarm conditions are triggered. We can set up nominal values within the device. 
for example, 230 volts for our mains voltage or 50 hertz for our frequency. The L452 tab is a special function which allows us to use via Bluetooth the PEL104 with our L452 universal logger. The universal logger can be used with a wide range of sensors via its current and voltage inputs. So for example, if you wanted to log temperature alongside your normal logging data, that could be achievable via the L452 and a Bluetooth connection. The final tab available on the PEL104 configuration screen is for reports. And as we said earlier, the PEL104 gives us the option to actually log data and then transmit it via our relay server. We have a separate video on these functions, so I won't go into them in too much detail now. But what we can do with this is we can actually configure reports and input email addresses, and the PEL104 via a network connection will actually send reports at set intervals given the data or the message that we've pre-configured. So once we've configured the data, we click OK, and that data is then sent from the software into the PEL, and the PEL is configured, ready to go for our logging session. Hopefully you found that useful and you can see now how easy it is to set up the PEL 104 using the PEL transfer software on your PC. If you've enjoyed this video, please take the time to pop down and give us a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on another video again soon.